Batten disease is actually the common catch-all name for a group of disorders known as neuronal ceroid lipofusionosis. We commonly see four of them in the United States, infantile, late infantile, juvenile, and adult. They all have the same root cause, the same progression, and the same outcome. The thing that makes them different is how quickly the progression is and the fact that they are genetically different. In other words, each is the result of a different defective gene. Typically, they all have the same onset of symptoms, beginning with decline in vision that will eventually lead to total blindness. The decline in vision is normally followed by the onset of seizures. Children with Batten disease will suffer several different types of seizures. Seizures can often become extremely difficult to control. Fortunately, today we have a number of different drugs that children can take to control the seizures. It's not unusual for children with Batten disease to be on two, three, or four different anticonvulsants at one time to try to keep the seizures under control. Following the onset of seizures, children will eventually begin having problems with their mobility. Children with the infantile oftentimes never learn to walk. Children with late infantile will learn to walk, but it doesn't last very long. Children with juvenile will develop the skills of being able to run and walk and ride bicycles and that, but slowly it starts to deteriorate until they lose that ability and eventually become wheelchair bound and bedridden. The adults, they lose that ability too, but the onset is not until later, normally in the early 30s. Children also will suffer cognitive failure. Children with the infantile form may not ever learn to speak. Children with late infantile, they will develop some vocabulary. Children with juvenile will develop a full vocabulary but it slowly goes away and eventually they lose their speech altogether. Same with the adult onset. The disease is just a slow general regression. It degenerates. The cause is that Batten disease causes death of neurons or in other words death of brain cells. And as the brain cells die the brain atrophies or shrinks and as this happens we see all of these things begin to happen. The total loss of vision leading to blindness, the seizures, the loss of mobility, the loss of speech, the loss of the ability to eat and drink until the brain is no longer able to sustain life and they eventually die. My son Daniel is six years old. My name is Marcus Kerner. He has late infantile Batten's disease and is terminally ill and dying. Every moment is precious. Daniel's life has purpose. Daniel has a purpose-driven life along with all of these special children. When we as parents pass a child in a wheelchair on the street, we look and we say, God bless that child. God bless that family for being so strong. We don't look away. We don't look the other way and become uncomfortable in an elevator and say, oh, how are you today, and not talk about it. We greet the disease head on. We look into each other's eyes and we understand one another that what parents and families go through with this disease on a daily basis is so real. Parents and doctors can only take these kids so far up the mountain, but it's up to God to take them by the hand the rest of the way to the summit. And we have complete faith that that is exactly what will happen. There are so many people praying for all of these special children, from cloistered nuns in monasteries and convents throughout the world, to rabbis, clergymen, pastors, priests, you name it, and just the average person touched by these kids praying for these children. I cannot understate the power of prayer for each and every one of these kids in their lives. I will tell you this, and this is my own experience, Every time someone prays for one of these special children, 
the disease is not arrested. Their spirits are lifted. Their spirits are lifted into a state of grace that transcends anything I've been able to understand my whole life. But I do know this. I don't know how it works, but I do know that prayer works, and I have faith that these kids are receiving the blessing of God. Can you imagine subjecting your child to an operation in which eight borehole sites are made into the brain, live cells from another human being are injected into that brain, not knowing what will happen, and the doctor's telling you there's no guarantees, yet having absolute faith in God that these kids will be healed? That's what I have, and that's what I wanted to share with you today. I think for the first time this year. Oh, uh, really? Oh, uh, really? I mean, before uh, that, no matter how hard things were, uh, I felt optimistic. Even, even knowing that there would be an uh, end, uh, really? I felt uh, like I'm going to get through uh, this, and uh, really? we're still going to do all these positive uh, things, uh, really? and all my kids were all still very well cared uh, for, uh, really? everything. Uh, huh? This year, uh, I don't feel that way anymore. Uh, I'm scared and I'm tired uh, really? and I feel scared for her siblings. I feel like there's not enough of me uh, really? to stretch out and deal with all this stuff. Uh, really? I know I hope eventually I will, but I've always been such an optimistic, uh, really? you know. Uh, yeah, and seriously, uh, really? I just I feel crushed and oh, tired and oh, I'm just like, oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make sure that she gets everything that she needs, oh, all the services, all the good care, and at the same time take Savannah to cheerleading practice and go to her games and make sure Lily gets to swim school and dance class and all the things. They deserve to have a normal life. Every morning when I would go to school, I would have a 30-minute window between dropping the other kids off and Lily going to preschool. So I would just sit in the office because there was no reason to leave. But while I was sitting there, and I would have to go through this every morning, I would be sitting there and all the other moms that were in the PTA and the classroom moms would stand there and... talk about how they were closing on a house or their kids dance recital or their Disney vacation they were planning every single day last year. <laughs> and I know that sounds weird, but it, it was brutal because it was like sitting there like standing outside in the cold and looking inside a warm window and knowing you'd never ever get in there again.